What's up, home skillets? Welcome to another live stream. Wasn't at all sure that this would uh, happen this evening. So we were waiting on a grocery <coughs> delivery that got uh, significant, <laughs> significantly delayed. Um, not entirely sure how they managed to do it, but they hired like taxi drivers to cart it around. Um, yeah, I've not seen that before, but uh, we're done. So everything is here, I'm pretty sure. So we're gonna go ahead and make some fish and chips. They're classic fish and chips. We're going to make some uh, tartar sauce. We're going to do onion rings, which I uh, haven't ended up looking for the recipe, but I'm pretty sure that's pretty straightforward. So yeah, uh, fairly hungry, but this won't take too long. Um, so we'll just get right to it. Yeah, I think, I think we've got everything we need. Did I set the camera up properly? So that's straight. Then what if we go this way? No, that's worse. I am going to get a camera that I can leave here permanently. And just a touch more. I feel like a lot of people don't notice, but the symmetry bothers me when I can't get it right, so. Yeah, that's good. Cool, so, fish and chips. We're gonna be using some, uh, so this is beer battered fish. Uh, this is just like generic. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess and say it's from Vietnam if it even says product of Vietnam. <laughs> so this is the really, it's sort of like, uh, people call it catfish. I don't know if it is catfish, but this is what you would get in any fish and chips shop or any like pub or whatever, unless it's like a gastro pub and they say, otherwise it's probably gonna be this. Um, I don't know if it's the best uh, ingredient to be using on the sustainability front. Um, I don't know. Probably not, but uh, bassa is a, is a great sort of neutral white fish. Fairly firm flesh, uh, doesn't really taste like much, at least from um, the places that this comes from. Uh, but that actually makes it perfect for fish and chips because it, you know, you don't, you're not really looking for like a particularly fishy dish when you do fish and chips. So that's the story, but we will be using some of my home brewed beer in the batter which is exciting. So this is a pale ale in theory. Um, I think the originally original recipe called for stout, but this is a, uh, yeah, it's essentially Cooper's pale. It's not quite Cooper's pale. It's not too far off it though. So we'll be using that. But the first thing we need to do is get our potatoes on. So there's a, there's a, there's a range of ways that you can do um, chips fries, whatever. Um, I tend to like, and I've been experimenting a little bit, I, I like parboiling them first. I think it makes a big difference, um, but not too cooked because you, you lose a, a large amount of volume um, because it, there's a lot of water in these. So tonight I'm going to be cutting them up a, th a bit thicker than what I normally would just to see if that kind of um, mitigates the, the loss of, of volume. Because the last ones I did, they were good, they were crunchy, but they were sort of just a bit, uh, kind of collapsed in on themselves, I suppose. And then I went right the other way. I didn't parboil anything. I just cooked them straight up from raw. And that was all right as well, but um, it didn't have the crunchy sort of texture to it. It was uh, sort of like these kind of fatter, heavier, heavier chips. So we'll parboil these um, and then we will, uh, but we're just going to cut them thicker. That's the plan. Sup, sup, has jazz? What's the, 
What's the haps at Cafe 49? Who's, who's cooking this evening? I'm also not going to peel these as well as part of the experiment. Uh, yes, the guy. Because we didn't actually have um, fish and chips while we were down at the coast. So I figure I'll make up for it here this evening. Uh, pot of boiling water. We're not going to freeze them because um, we're, we're already sort of behind time. So we're just going to parboil them and fry them. We'll let them dry a little bit. But that's about it. Oh, that camera's not. Eh. Hooray for finishing work. Mama's making chicken schnitties. Oh, that's sweet. Do you like a good schnitty? We did, um, we had, oh yeah, a, um, a roast down at the coast, like a, a, a vegetable, vegetarian roast roll with, uh, like the Gravox gravy, all your, all your sort of favorite condiments. And it was pretty convincing. So... That was good, but we were just a bit too far away from, um, so I'm nervous about leaving them th this thick, but this is, I'm, I'm going to say it's all for science. And so that's what we're going to, we're going to stick to it. It'll, it'll taste fine. Um, yeah, so we were, we were up in a, a treetop kind of, um, cabin I suppose not particularly close to anything and so we didn't do fish and chips we just cooked I, and I reckon oh yeah and so the, the guy presumably the guy that owns the cabins that we rented is a uh, like a wine taster and a columnist by trade and he's written some cookbooks we Shelley made the connections there I'll put a link up in a moment so like River Cottage style, but like New South Wales coastal, um, I don't know how to, how to describe it, but it was funny. <laughs> I'm just going to get some salt into this water, which I've already gotten out. Yeah, it's like the, the olive, the squid, and the apple or something. It was very, very River Cottage themed. These are fine. Well, and so we were not too far from the beach you could probably walk it but it's not like uh, out the front sort of uh, proximity but that said though um, it's far away from you know the crowds and in the forest so we saw a whole range of things so your red-necked wallabies with little joeys heaps and heaps of kangaroos um, and a lot of bird life as well so there was a rainbow lorikeet nest literally just next to the deck um, and so we watched watched the baby birds be fed by mother bird that was very nice I don't think I need this additional potato saw some sort of a hawk or like a eagle uh, what else? But yeah, a lot of, a lot of um, marsupial life. And there was a place maybe five minutes down from where we were that had free, <laughs> free range chickens, but like in the literal sense. So they didn't have a coop or a run or anything. So this big 
sort of property with grass that led up to the road and the driveway. The chickens were just bocking around out there, probably, I don't know, two dozen of them or something like that. And um, yeah, that was, that was fun to see. Sup, sup ding bottom. Sup and haps indeed. We're just reviewing our um, trip to Borley Point. Which was good and I'm very yeah very glad we took the binoculars <laughs> it was sort of because you know you, you look through these things like looking through a telescope and you're never sure if you're actually going to see anything so I took them out to the balcony and then so it's just forest all around I'm like okay well what, what will I what will I hunt down you know what am I going to be able to see and then when I put the uh, binoculars to my eyes literally there was a wallaby right in the middle of the the view <laughs> <laughs> just in this random spot that I picked um, so that was cool yeah and it being spring here a lot of little baby yeah joeys I saw are joeys I'm just I'm just gonna guess that joeys are also what baby wallabies are called so there was one that got in and out of the nest I mean the pouch and then he wanted to get back in but this I think evolutionarily the problem with pouches is how do you get in it's easy enough to get out and so this little guy he sort of sticks his head in first and then eh, and then he's upside down in the pouch <laughs> and then you know it takes minutes to sort of get yourself the right way around <laughs> but yeah that was good I haven't seen that many wallabies um, in the one spot for, for a long time um, yeah, for our international viewers, wallabies are smaller kangaroos, but much more shy, um, much more reserved, much smaller. And I don't actually know if they're, well, they won't be the same species. Hmm. Now that I think about it, I don't know much about wallabies. Yeah, joeys, okay. But so these were, the last wallaby I saw apart from this trip of the black, the black rock, rock hoppers up in uh, Tibimbilla on Imagi. But these are redneck. And so they have this sort of rusty red that runs down the bottom of them. And then really a, a, a really sort of uh, pronounced black stripe down the, the snout. Very cute. Good to see. All right. Just bring this to the boil. Uh, pig, the squid cookbook. I'll just look up this cookbook. The pig, the olive, and the squid. Hang on. So I mean, a good good product placement because we found it, you know, in the random shelves of books but then we connected the dots between the Airbnb host and the, um, and the title of the author. And um, certainly it's the same guy. <laughs> so that was a good laugh. All right, potatoes going in. And so we're parboiling these. That's a bit loud. Tartar sauce. So tartar sauce. Oh, mayo. Did that come? Ooh. Oh, it did. That's good. So I, I quite like how that book's laid out. I, I went to buy a copy, but um, it's been out of print for a while. 2007, I think it was published. And so he studied history at uni. Um, and then obviously knows, knows his wine. So it's a combination of food history, 
uh, origin of some cuisine, origin of some of the simple regional dishes in Spain, in Italy. And uh, yeah, just a, a discussion on staple foodstuffs through the ages. I liked how it was laid out. I liked the photography, which was obviously silly. He was obviously poking fun at himself. Um, mm, and I'd buy a copy if I could find one. Hello, won't he? Hello. We've been struggling today trying to get Whitey to eat her pill. She's not very interested in it. And despite my best efforts to conceal it, <laughs> I even had a, a like a, a big dry food whisket trying to scrape out the middle so that I could stuff the pill into it so that she'd be fooled. But very sensitive noses, those cats. And even uh, when she's hungry, you can see that she sort of stops and then eats around the pill and then knocks it off to the side and won't have any of it. So we're going to have to resort to a more um, direct method, I'm afraid, because it's for our own good. Our own damn good. So tartar sauce. I'm just watching whether or not, you know, I mean, I suppose if she was hungry enough. Then again, she's a pretty picky eater. So this tartar sauce is, I think it's one of my favorite recipes. It's just genuinely surprising how good it is compared to the, the stuff in the jar. Mayo, onion, dill, pickle, uh, capers, lemon juice, salt and sugar is important. And I'll just make sure I'm not forgetting anything else. Yeah, so even with the rain, um, it, was, it was a nice trip. I think the last time I was down there was, we think, two years ago for, was it Anzac Day or Easter or something, where we all went to that big, big house. Two pickles. Mm. We'll just, we'll start with this and, and take it from there. I'm not going to bother chopping them. Dill. Lemon juice. And the good thing about this is you can sort of adjust it as it goes. Some salt. 
pepper. Parsley. I've got to plant some parsley. That's actually a, a glaring omission in my um, lineup of, of herbs this year. And just a little bit of sugar as well. Maybe half a teaspoon. I feel like tartar sauce really does need the sugar. And we'll just blitz it and see, see what we end up with. So with the, because we've got salt and sugar in here, don't forget that, kind of like what we were saying last stream about letting the uh, dressing sit for a while, because we haven't really done anything to dissolve the sugar or the salt, um, the crystals are gonna be, they're gonna take a while to dissolve. I'm gonna add another pickle. down. The recipe actually calls for four, so we'll start with three. I was just reducing it a little bit. Eh. Okay. Apart from the sugar, obviously, you get a, a fair bit of sweetness uh, from the gherkins. let it chill and then uh, we will uh, adjust the seasoning one more time that's a really easy win for you let's have a look at the old uh, chops So they're good. They can keep bubbling away just for a little bit. And now we will think about the batter for the fish. Um, I, I'm not sure how much of a difference letting the batter sit makes in this context. And actually, I would like to do a side-by-side -side comparison for, um, you know, this is the traditional, the conventional wisdom, I suppose, for batter for uh, pancakes is let it sit. But I, I, I'm not like, I th the only the only reason I can think of um, is maybe the autolyzing of the flour. Uh, so the starch, the glucose, and the starches. Once they're exposed to water, start to form a different structure. Um, but I, I don't see how it would make a difference to the flavor necessarily for a really basic batter. Um, we're not going to find out tonight because we're running be behind time. So we'll just make a, a straight up batter. I'll get all the dry ingredients together um, before we use the beer. Do I have a big batter bowl? I do. Just gonna 
can bugger off for the moment. But I would very much like to get down to the coast again sooner rather than later. Hotra Bubba. I didn't see the follow, but uh, thank you very much. And welcome if you're still here. I need like an audio alert or something. Um, God. Bloody, bloody negligent. That's what I am. <laughs> uh, maybe it was a bot. But I, I've said that before and then I've insulted people, so don't mind me. So for the banner, one cup of flour. I'm gonna go to the markets tomorrow and get me a, a big, big bag of butter. I mean, uh, flour. <laughs> Roughly one cup. Half a cup of corn flour. Actually, you know, I could have probably reduced... Oh, well, it's too late. The, cat, the, the flour's out of the bag, as they say. Oh. Half a cup of corn flour. I think this is the most critical component of the batter. Um, I have recently used potato starch and rice starch um, in lieu of, of corn starch. And I think the potato starch is, is probably like my new corn flour of choice. It's just remarkable. It's so light. And you get, well, from the times that I've used it, like consistent results as well. Um, half a teaspoon of baking soda. Which I have somewhere. Bicarb, there it is. a touch more and then a teaspoon of salt and I'm also going to throw some pepper in here as well where is my pepper and so the liquid that we're going to be including here is the beer but not just yet I'm not quite ready for that Check the potatoes. So they're 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 good. They're cooked. Um, and now I just need like a draining device. And we're just going to let them sit out in the open for a bit. To dry off a bit. Cool. All right, we're looking good. So obviously we're gonna be frying a lot of stuff, so we're gonna use some vegetable oil. I think this has become my sort of de facto frying pot. Um, I think if I had a bigger kitchen, I might have get one of those like mini, uh, what are they, like mini, mini deep fryers, I guess. 
but this works just fine. Oh, and the other thing I'd say about the potatoes is, so they're draining and they're drying now. If you just sort of, uh, not too much, but like just rough them up a little bit, you get a bit of a texture happening and that, um, that lends itself to uh, like a more crispy kind of chip. Um, but it's a real balancing game because they obviously like that one broke. Um, but uh, yeah, roughing up the texture, uh, the surface gives a good texture once it's all fried. And you can see, or well, I don't know if you can see, but the, the steam that's coming off, that's what we want. We want these to dry out a little bit. Um, could spread them out, but we're behind schedule, so this will be fine. There's not many things that are deep fried that taste bad, so it's not, not really a risky proposition. Oil. I think we're aiming for something like uh, 130 degrees. I have, I have genuinely, <clears throat> apart from my thermometer dying, stopped. Um, chasing the temperature on this like you can you can get it pretty you can get it pretty well by eye after a period of time um, and because we're double frying these so these will be uh, <coughs> technically uh, triple cooked chips I don't think the lo the lower well first of all the potatoes cooked Secondly, the lower temperature is just to get like a, a seal, I suppose. And then once we're done with all that, we we'll take them all out and then we uh, turn the heat up on the oil really high and then just give them a really quick blast, which is where you get that <coughs> uh, brown, like really sort of crispy, dark fried uh, color, I suppose. And that just additional bit of crisp. And once I glue the lid back onto my uh, thermometer, We'll see, see if my guesstimations are anywhere near correct in terms of temperatures. But I think, I think we're talking about 130 to 150. It's sort of the ballpark figure there. That's my thoughts on frying. So I'll just mix this up. Put it to one side. We'll go BRB and then I'll do <laughs> the research I should have done about an hour ago. And we'll move on to the onion rings because we're going to use buttermilk um, for the onion rings. Okay. BRB.
So I haven't done this recipe before. Looks pretty straightforward though. In fact, it's very similar to the, hmm. Nah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it right. So here we want flour, baking powder, and salt. Baking powder. We'll learn together. Don't know if you need that much for uh, one onion. <clears throat> I'm going to halve this. So about a half cup of flour, a little bit less really. Half a teaspoon of baking powder. And a bit less and half a teaspoon of salt a bit less that's fine combine Shelley mentioned something about buttermilk but the recipes I've been looking at don't mention it could probably just use it instead of. Now that's actually that's interesting, because uh, a popular Serbian snack is raw onion rings with a glass of buttermilk. You know what? I'm going to use the buttermilk. Breadcrumbs. All right, so these are, yeah, crumbed. We've, I've only got panko, pretty sure, which will be fine. Okay, so we need, I'm looking for uh, almost a cup of buttermilk and I'm going to break an egg into this as well. That'll give us uh, colour but it will give us flavour as well. And fortunately we ordered eggs and hopefully they're okay. Presumably, I'm just going to use a shallow bowl for the breadcrumbs. Cool. It's a quarter of an onion. I need rings. Mm -hmm. 
Presumably you could do almost exactly the same for squid. So you get your sort of fried calamari that way. Yeah, it's just a bit harder to peel. And I also feel like these would Oh no, but we go the flour first. All right, so I'll just get a little plate. And I suppose it depends on how thick you like the, the rings. Yep, yep, looks good, looks good. Onion button. <laughs> cool. Whoop. Onion cup. And you know, actually, that gives me an idea for later. I'm going to keep these. All right, let's clear away and then we're pretty much ready to start. The oil has been heating. But I'll just test it. We'll test it now. So that's, well, that's close, but I want just maybe another 10 or 10 degrees or so. And all that popping and the bubbling is from the water. Let's check in on the uh, tartar sauce. It, <clears throat> it just needs a little bit more uh, sugar. After trying um, Master Foods tartar sauce, I, I guess I underestimated how sweet commercial tartar sauce is. But that's close and I'm gonna give it another waz. And back into the fridge because I do want it um, chilled. I'm also going to preheat the oven just because we've got a couple of things that are going to be going on it um, one after the other and I want them to maintain some heat at least without getting soggy. So I'm just gonna put it on a, like 150 degrees to begin with, just heat up the, the oven and then let it sit for a bit. And then we have the beer for the batter and we're pretty much, yeah, okay. Should probably, wow, this came together much faster. How long have I been doing this for? 
it's like 53 minutes and then yeah if I wanted to go right now you'd have you'd have dinner within the hour for sure but we need to as always check in on Shelly but actually while <laughs> before we do that how good is my new 90s style pattern shirt one of two uh, this I can see wearing myself wearing to a bowling alley or an MTV concert and then this one this one makes me want to watch like a liftoff or um, DuckTales or uh, Darkwing Duck or something some some Disney from the 90s that's what this is all about <laughs> And you better believe I'll be wearing it. I knew that fashion would come back. <laughs> Still just a bit more, a bit more heat. Also put on the side a um, how's best to do it. I think using like a cooling uh, cooling rack. And we'll put that over a tray. And then we'll do the chips and the onion rings first and we'll do the the fish at the end. No, oh, wait, I have a bigger one. Yeah. Cool. We'll BRB, check our timings, and then we'll kick off. This won't take long.
let's fry some, let's fry some stuff. So our parboiled potatoes are cool and relatively dry. We're gonna fry them all once, we're gonna pull them out and then we're gonna fry them a second time at a higher temperature. So let's see what that looks like. Hopefully nobody gets burned. I've learnt my lesson. I'm going to do them in two batches. Um, the amount of heat that gets pulled out of oil is remarkable when you add really solid foodstuffs to it. Siri, play the next track. So we're aiming to get a bit of colour and get a, a crispy shell on the outside of all of this. I'm gonna say like three minutes or something like that. I mean, it really does depend on how hot the oil is. But once you've done it enough times, you'll start, you'll be able to, to, to pick it by eye. Just keeping an eye on the uh, the frame rate of the second camera because yeah, <clears throat> we've established quite a while ago that heat there's a direct correlation between heat and how well it pushes data over the Wi-Fi. And as it gets hotter, it gets worse. You can even feel it on the um, the spoon. You can feel, it's kind of like cooking rice or pasta. Even without putting it in your gob, you can tell uh, how far pasta is along or rice is. Definitely just by the feel of putting a utensil in there. Another minute, I reckon. So starting from next week, we will be oh, beginning the uh, gingerbread build. So watched a couple of fairly uh, <laughs> <laughs> fairly involved videos some some people take it very seriously we'll take it relatively seriously um, but it's not going to be just your standard sort of uh, four-walled kind of house I'm thinking a, like a, a garden uh, like a, a hot house a greenhouse or something like that a glass house on the side so definitely a farm kind of uh, layout uh, because I've got a stack of uh, isomalt that I have not used a huge amount of yet and so for the windows um, things like that all things glass is going to be ice malt and um, now that we've got some silicon uh, baking mats it's going to make it a hell of a lot easier to actually uh, do <coughs> slightly more sort of finicky or uh, delicate candy work of which I am far from an expert all right so these are pretty much where I want them Maybe just a minute more.
Yep, so the isomalt screwed around with for a bit. I was gonna live stream that experiment, but um, <laughs> I'm kind of glad I didn't. Uh, some of it worked quite well, some of it didn't. Um, it's a very it's a very unique product, isomalt. Um, so I experimented with some deionized water and colorings and things like that, and got some pr some pretty cool uh, results out of it. But I think primarily for windows, stained glass windows actually would be a a really a good use of it. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a mission, and those streams are going to be earlier on in the day, I think, because there's going to be sort of hours that separate. Um, yeah, cooling and setting and, and so forth. It's been a long time since I made a gingerbread house. I've done it before, um, but that was before I started making dioramas and other things like that. So, yeah, I've got I've got I've got some ideas. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of goldenness happening here. So that's that's fine. That's all I want for this first first batch because I also don't want to chase too much heat uh, sorry too much uh, water out of them as well and I'm also at this stage gonna just let the oil heat up again oh, rogue chip just to bring it back to that temperature where we started in the first place. Oh, camera is down. Oh, it is really hot, isn't it? Jeez. Oh no. Going in the fridge. <laughs> I think I think that the solution really needs to be uh, a camera where I can just zoom in a little bit so I can get it a bit further back from the, the heat source. God damn it. That hasn't happened for a while. <laughs> uh, all right, well. Uh, while that cools down, I am gonna start the next batch. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. How annoying. The only other time uh, I've had that kind of problem is leaving my phone in the sun accidentally. That makes a big difference. But with the metal, um, it really does cool down quite quickly. that back? Hang on. Maybe we'll get a uh, fridge view. Fridge can. <laughs> okay, we'll give it a bit longer. You know what? The freezer. Whoop. The problem is I don't really have a place where I can mount the camera at an angle where I can zoom in too far. <laughs> Sanders, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome back to the technical difficulties. <laughs> What's on the menu at Sanders HQ? Because you'll all be done with the Thanksgiving. So now it's all about ramping up to Christmas. Oh, actually, yeah. So I've got some salmon in the freezer and we will do a salmon soup of some sort. Uh, I think this week. Almost, almost cool enough. Ah, 
Oh, bean dang. Well, happy birthday. What do you, um, does that mean you get what you want? You just say, make me some damn salmon soup. Post haste. Maybe you can have a peach Fanta on the side. That's exciting. Man, maybe I should... Uh, whoa. Because I wasn't streaming. Uh, my birthday's in February. Maybe I'll have to do a, a bloody birthday stream. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, tell me, yeah, because, uh, you know, I've got to say, so your suggestion there of the uh, the cheese and the broccoli soup, misnamed the Chinese broccoli soup, but the cheese and broccoli soup was really good. Um, so I, I have confidence. I have confidence in what Sanders Lad recommends. Maybe we'll all wear party hats. What's the actual date? I reckon Shelly would wear a party hat. <laughs> Just a moment more. Seventh. Oh! Okay. Are you guys going out or what's the story? Hello. Hi. It's chilly. Mmm, it smells like a fush and chip shop. Fush and chops. Yes. Who are you, Pauline Hanson? Yes. But with better politics. The most famous fish and chip monger there is. Mmm, mmm. Probably should have just stayed in that business, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it was weird. I saw Jackie Lambie was like hating on One Nation and uh, it's like the religious discrimination or freedom bill and it's weird because sometimes sometimes like what she was saying was like yeah you're right <laughs> yeah Jackie will uh, she'll she'll tell it like it is she'll side swipe you with Sanders is going out for sushi for his birthday tomorrow and he gets all the salmon. <laughs> oh, happy mm. birthday for tomorrow. Mm. I don't think I'm brave enough to do a sushi stream yet. What's your um what's your position on wasabi, Sanders? It's a it's a polarizing condiment. So second batch is done, turn the heat up high and we're bringing the, the heat of this oil way up. Oh man, I want sushi right now. I guess I could eat some of this basa raw. <laughs> <laughs> Master of Splits, fish and chips again. I made that in like June or July. It was September actually. Um, and yeah, we've come back from the coast and uh, there was Frosty. I think it's Sanders' friend, yeah. He was all about the fish and chips the other night. He's like, make fish and chips, so here I am. And now he's not here. <laughs> but no, you're right, I did make that about three months ago. Uh, if you want the recipe, check Discord. It's a good recipe. It's a, it is a good recipe. Oh, are you making the onion rings also? I'm making onion rings as well. That I didn't do the last time. Have you ever made onion rings? I've never made onion rings. Oh. Mm, so hopefully this is not bad. <laughs> Should be right. We got that idea talking about green bean casserole with the crispy fried onions on top. Mm, mm, very American. Yeah. Um, no, well, and I think we've had, we've eaten fish and chips between then. We got some from the pub down the road, mm. which was good. Some from the local fish and chips place, which was all right. Um, yeah. You know, you can't expect too much from that kind of place, I suppose. <laughs> How's it compared to Bosnia? I, I can't remember where I um, got this recipe. Oh no, it was from um, 
Rick Stein's son. Uh, okay, so Sanders used to not like wasabi, but now he does. Good. I, I reckon wasabi makes it. But what, I, what I'm not big on is the, um, the ginger. I don't use the ginger much. This is just like the packaged ginger that comes in the little plastic packets. I know what it's there for, but it's, yeah. What's, um, what are you making tonight, Splits? Or what did you make? Uh, the, like the paste. There's a, there's a, um, because yeah, like real wasabi, I've only ever had once because it's really quite expensive. So we we're talking about like dyed horseradish, but man, I love that stuff. But yeah, like the paste and then mix it with the soy sauce into, uh, I'm gonna say slurry, that doesn't sound very appealing. <laughs> yeah, the paste, the paste is where it's at, for sure. But yeah, real wasabi is expensive. And a lot of the um, the more expensive restaurants, it's air freighted, it's air shipped. So they'll pick it and then they'll fly it to market. Hello. Hello, Whitey. Frozen salmon patties and a turkey sandwich. Oh, I like all of those things. We were just talking about frozen salmon. Mm. Yes. I can go for a turkey sandwich. Did it have cranberry sauce on it though? Cranberry sauce and gravy. That's what I, that's what I picture. So now we just want color out of this. Oh yeah, cold cuts. Man, cold collation. That's something I miss. <laughs> yes, as we were discussing before, Whitey is, she's kind of now a little bit suspicious when we go to feed her. She's like, is there a pill in here? What are you trying to roofie me? I believe is the term. She took the self-defense classes. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Have you seen Carl today? I've not seen... Oh, yeah. That's the other big news. Carl, Carl Carlson, the cat, oh, Sooty's best friend, is back. He's back. Um, nigiri salmon or salmon rolls, which is better, do you think? Good question. Salmon rolls for on the go. Um, nigiri is a win though. Um, especially like with a little bit of mayo. Um, the, the Kewpie mayo, like the Japanese mayo. And then just straight up uh, sashimi for sure. I'll eat it. Yeah, if you ever come to Canberra, so there's a fantastic um, Japanese restaurant here. Like, pretty friggin' expensive. But, they know what they're doing. And presumably, or I would hope, <laughs> given the prices, that uh, this sauce, uh, the fish is sort of uh, very particularly and immediately sourced from high quality locations. But yeah, Carl is back after six months. Just a moment more. That's been a few months. Yeah, six. Um, roughly, so the last uh, photo or the last video I have him with, of oh, him yeah. playing with Sooty is about six months ago. And then he disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, and then yesterday, I came, we came home and then Sooty was bouncing around in the backyard behind the chicken coop. And then he fell out and then Carl just tumbled out as well. I think he's, uh, his owners like must have gone overseas or something because it's like six months I don't know, I can't really... He was here every day, yeah. so we thought they must have moved or something yeah. less 
ideal happened. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause he just did, one day he just was gone. And then one day he's just been, <laughs> it's a bloody Christmas miracle. <laughs> It is a Christmas miracle. <laughs> a Columbus miracle. Get the nigiri, uh, Sanders. Yeah, or, or both. Oh no, has Jazz is giving competing competing directions. Yeah, get yeah, both. Who's gonna stop you? <laughs> Not me. All right, we have chips. <laughs> have you guys seen that video of uh, that guy who puts his uh, camera on the sushi train <laughs> and then it just beetles around the loop and then goes into the kitchen and then comes back out and then he picks it up on the next run oh, that was quite clever <laughs> Change the camera I did. <laughs> Me too. Um Splits, we almost didn't do the stream. We were worried that the uh, groceries weren't going to make it here on time. It was a close call. All right. Timing wise, we'll do the onion rings next. It's going to go in this direction. I can't, I can't, um, you can rarely lose with sushi. One of, one of my weird, uh, <clears throat> like flavor combos that I really love is sushi with a lot of, oh, camera, a lot of wasabi, um, and then vanilla, vanilla Coke. I swear to God, vanilla Coke is a fantastic accompaniment to sushi. I like peach iced tea. Oh yep, that's another good one. Yeah, has jazz. Has jazz and flim flam. Bliss blazing him ham. <laughs> has jazz's birthday soon. I've already got her present. <laughs> oh, I went to change the camera and there's not one there. The seventh, so yeah, tomorrow or the day after. So if I don't stream tomorrow, technically our seventh, make it Wednesday. Well, but then he'll be out eating. What's the point of streaming if the birthday kid isn't there? I ask you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about VODs, they sort of lose a bit of their magic. <laughs> Not that I can see. She's been really dropping off the obligations. Mm, it's outrageous. <laughs> Are they going at four? Yeah. I mean now. It's a lot later. Oh, I'd be so full. We've got Commander Root in here. We've got Master of Splits is still here. Pain fullest. Some other random. Oh, Academy of Possible. That's nice. Isn't that a bot? BRB dinner. It's kind of a bot. It's a farm in England. It's not a bot, but it's just a bot. 
a bot with a person attached to it occasionally. BRB dinner. It's it's chicken schnitty nine at Cafe Forty Nine. Oh. Mmm. Mama. Mama Schnittyberg, as they call her. <laughs> oh, food truck. We saw some food trucks yesterday and the day before. Really makes you think. About starting a food truck? Yep. Oh yeah, what about the idea for that new hole in the wall restaurant? Yeah, well, maybe it could be a food truck, a truck, maybe a, a soup truck. So tell the idea. Well, I, you know, I just think the, and I think maybe it's because we've been watching Seinfeld. Um, but you know, just straight up, straight up soup, soup and fine bread out of a truck. Yeah, and that's it. And that's it. Don't complicate the offerings. Just go with high quality soups, seasonal soups. Um, you know really reduce the complexity of it, but have a grand, because a good soup, there's not many people that say, oh, well, I don't like good soup. Everyone likes good soup. And we don't have anything like that in Canberra. Yeah, we like summer soups. Mm, mm, as yeah. well as winter soups. Gazpacho. Yeah, because in Canberra, a bloody cereal Oh yeah, yeah. Apparently this is like a really American thing, the cereal bar. Yeah, a cereal bar where you yeah. can go and just get a bowl of cereal mm. at any time of the day or night. <laughs> and they have all of these... Yeah, like American ones? In the shop. Yeah. Uh, like your... Um, what's like the... Reese's and, and Crunch. Yeah, Captain Crunch and... Uh, what's those... like Please. the. Wheaties, those fruit ball, like the lumps, they're just like circles of sugar, basically, like the... Lucky Charms? Uh, Lucky Charms as well, but I was thinking of, um, yeah, I don't know. What are the balls? Are they colourful? Yeah, 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 it's like a fruit bowl. <laughs> I can't think of the word. Fruity Pebbles? Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of like that, like a Pebbles. Yeah, Fruity Pebbles. Fruit, fruity Pebbles. Yeah, is it a um, is the uh, the truck a, a local kind of thing, Sanders, or a, a chain? I don't really know how it works over there. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's and and they've set up shop in a really weird. It's kind of like um, I guess an industrial area, but it's kind of like uh, an up and coming location. I guess there's a really there's a good brewery out there. There's some good cafes, and so but it's just like it still has this not stigma, but people don't think oh, you know I'm going to go out to Fishwick for a bowl of cereal. <laughs> At least I don't, but I might now. Oh, okay, sweet. Yeah, I've never tried American fish and chips. Presumably, it's very similar to British fish and chips. But uh, I'm, I'm all for the, the cereal wagon. All right, this is the last one. Because imported, like the Lucky Charms, for example, are ten, thirteen dollars a box here. Because they're all imported, uh, it's quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of money to pay for a box of sugar. Yeah, I just, uh, like all I'm thinking of is in Happy Gilmore. Like there's a scene where he drives the ball way down and it smashes through the window of this house and it the, the golf ball lands in this bowl of cereal is that the colored candy balls 
<laughs> All right. <sighs> Let's get this camera out one more time. <laughs> it's got a chill to it. Hopefully that, hopefully that helps. In fact, it's frosted. Oh, it's just gonna have to do. <laughs> Frosty. Tricks. Yeah, that's what I'm picturing. Yeah, that's fruity bowl cereal. That's Gosh. it's got to be tricks. Mm, mm, mm. They look good. They look like spherical fruit, fruit loops. Yeah, yeah. And I can love fruit loops. <laughs> yeah, you do. You just can't. It's got a taste. It does. I think I'll give, um, what's the magic ones again? The leprechaun cereal? Uh, Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms. <laughs> I'll try Lucky Charms again, uh, like one of their seasonal. They have a St. Patrick's Day one. I think they probably do Christmas. Yeah, no, I was really underwhelmed. Yeah. I'm going to try tricks now. That looks right up my alley. Well, we're, I guess we're going to, on a trip to Fishwick then, aren't we? Mm. Get some beer. What happens to your camera? It can't, take can't take the heat. Ho ho ho! These look like onion rings to me. Hot mama. And you get that, it smells oniony. Yes. Probably no longer than that. Um, the breading didn't stay on very well for that one. Yes, well, actually, the tip from the chick was she was soaking it in the buttermilk mostly for the coating to stick, actually. Okay, okay. This is good intel. Still, I think yep. it's not too bad. Some of these are more like onion seeds. Oh, that one's down. Onion down, Muriel. Smells good. Cool. Yeah, they are going fast. I don't know. I'm not an onion ring scientist, but that's all right. Oh, I need a, I think a spoon. To be honest, I can't even tell you the last time I had an onion ring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They were good. Yeah, they were good. Oh, that needs to go over. Oh dear. Oh well. Fish. Homebrew beer. Oh! Oh, that's... Got a good amount of fizz in it. You know what? 
I should have stuck with the whisk. No, that's all right. Mmm, it smells good. And I want it, I don't want it too thin. What else? I don't want to burn the onion rings. Woo! That's all right. I think, I think onion is the best smelling cooking smell. <laughs> if that's a sentence. Just a touch more. And so we will get some bubble, some effervescence from the beer, which is why I waited to pour it in. And I think what I'm going to do is just chop them um, a little bit just to the size of my pot. the same size I'm gonna say and we'll save this last one or something else I think, I think frying is something that shows you when you need a slightly larger kitchen. Gets that windy. Let's do it. Looking good, looking good. Plates. Tartar sauce, bowls.
this would uh, this is why like having a little fryer with the basket would be quite handy They're ready to come out. Whoops, forgot to change the camera. And I'm putting these on the, um... man, this is way too much food. <laughs> Gonna let them drip, drip off as well. Yeah, this is heaps too much. What was I thinking? And then on the side, yeah, just the tartar sauce, we'll have some lemon wedges. And a bit of parsley. <laughs> it would be, yeah, I think between 12 and... I was looking at flights to the US the other day. <laughs> When I get a bigger kitchen, I'll get, I'll get me a fryer. Whoa. That one's a bit stuck to it. She'd be right. All right, let's get the tartar sauce out. Oh, probably should have used a bigger spoon. And done this before I cleaned the bench top. <laughs> That's all right. For sure, I um, you know, I didn't used to like tartar sauce, um, and I'm not entirely sure when that changed. But yeah, now now I, I really do. Um, I can't really remember. I was just always big on the um, yeah, just lemon and, and salt, really, and tartar sauce. I think it was because of the sweet, the sickly sweetness. Um, I just didn't get it as a, as a kid, I guess. Um, but yeah, these days, I do. I forgot to uh, this. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
I did indeed. <clears throat> they were saying that was going to be the next phase. Um, mm. So yeah. So if you got the solar panels, uh -huh. which Charge it during the day on yep. solar power and pay nothing for fuel or for electricity. Yeah. Um, That's know, bloody amazing. <laughs> it is, and I can't remember if I'd if I'd sort of if I've been talking about it on stream like that. So we've c committed to getting the solar, so 9.8 kilowatt system with a 10 kilowatt hour battery, and uh, probably yeah March April I think at the earliest, but. That it should mean a significant amount of um, electricity we take from our friend the sun. And the government here um, is incentivizing uh, this kind of purchase. So you get, you have to pay for it, but the interest free, so the loans are interest free for the installation. Um, and the money that you make back on the solar panels is more than what you pay back on the loan over over 10 years is the idea um, and so f like effectively that means it's it's free um, or it's more that you swap your energy your electricity bill out for repaying for the for the solar cells so yes <clears throat> finished some more of that paperwork this morning actually and so it's all set to go and that'll be quite exciting. Be quite a lot of cells. It's 24 cells on the roof and on the garage as well. So maybe I can maybe I'll tune it so that I live stream just on the power of of the sun. <laughs> oh, it's a it's a fisherman's basket almost. Wait, we have a we have a new time a first time chatter. We have <laughs> a rumor asks for a fridge tour. Chaotic uh, asks for a fridge tour as well. It's funny you mentioned that um, because I had planned on doing exactly that. If you had been here earlier, maybe after we put the groceries away. Yeah, we've got to put the groceries in it. But yes, absolutely. Um, my camera was in there before because it overheated. <laughs> and welcome guys, what brings you here? Very good to see new faces. Good to see new faces. But yeah, I, 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 I actually agree with you. Trolling, trolling or not, it's actually something that I've been wanting to do. <laughs> There's not much in there. In fact, this stream almost didn't happen because the groceries were delayed. <laughs> Maybe you need to do a tour of the outside of the fridge. Tour of the outside. Um, there might be. No, there's stuff on there that you. There's a story. What? Yeah, but yeah, we we'll have to de-anonymize some of the stuff so we don't get yeah. doxxed by punks. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor is auditing individuals in this character, making in fact they're stocked up with Frank's red hot. I don't know what that is. Frank's Red Hot, isn't that like a lolly? Or is it hot sauce? Um, I thought Red Hot was like a like one of those cinnamon I'm, chili lolly things. Spices. No, it's like big red. I think that's big red, isn't it? Mm. Gives me asthma. <laughs> um, we're going to look that up in future. So, uh, rumor and uh, chaotic make sure to follow because if you follow now um, and you return on the next stream we will indeed do a fridge tour and we will get to the bottom of whether or not we have enough Frank's Red Hots in the fridge, the pantry, wherever that particular food item um, belongs <laughs> <laughs> and whether or not we can get it here in Australia. Probably but, not. Probably not. Maybe they'll open a, uh, a Red Hots food truck in Fishwick. <laughs> uh, so guys, we're done. What did we get? What did we get out of all this bloody nonsense? Amazon. 
Amazon Australia. I'll, I will look that up. I like American stuff. Thanks, Ding Bottom. So, we got ourselves <laughs> just too much. Uh, we got ourselves some uh, fish, triple cooked chips, onion rings, the lemon, the parsley, and then we also got the homemade tartar sauce. Um, all of these recipes, indeed, as um, so previously pointed out, are in the Discord. Jump into the Discord, grab the recipes, give it a go, join the little community. I'm gonna eat these sooner, or oh, actually no, I have to do the, the taste test, don't I? I reckon you, yeah, you could hear the crunch. It's a good chip. But the onion rings. Maybe I need some hot sauce to go with that. Yeah, hooray. My very first onion ring. That's good. And then I suppose the fish. Since we're all here having fun. That's fish and chips, home skillets. <laughs> <laughs> yep. This basically is catfish. So basa, Vietnamese basa. Massa. Bassa. It's good. All right. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for following. Hey, I haven't seen any additional follows. Chaotic. Um, thanks to everyone who watched. Early happy birthday, Sanders. We'll be back either tomorrow or the night after. Happy birthday, Sanders lad. Indeed. Shelly knows what's good. We'll leave it there. Um, thanks for watching, and we will catch you again really quite soon. Enjoy the sushi. Bye for now.